At the heart of the turbulent history of the Kingdom of Judah appears a fascinating but little known figure, that of the prophetess Hulda. This exceptional woman who lived in Jerusalem during the reign of King Josiah in the 7th century. BC deserves a closer look at her character and influence, for she played a crucial role at a pivotal time for the future of the nation. Hulda is a biblical figure who merits being rediscovered. For this courageous prophetess played a key part in Israel's history, and in her example remains relevant for us today. Yet she is little known and rarely highlighted. Let us examine in detail who this woman was, the context in which she exercised her prophetic ministry, and the reasons why her influence was so significant. What do we know about Huldah? Her name in Hebrew means mole or shrew, which is rather unusual for a person's name. This perhaps suggests she was of modest origins. She is one of the rare women explicitly called a prophetess in the Hebrew Bible. It is a prestigious title generally reserved for men. Hulda was certainly an educated woman, able to read and interpret the scriptures. At that time, few women had access to such education. We do not know if she had children, unlike most women of the era. She is not described by her motherhood. None of her oracles or prophetic words were preserved in the Bible except for her prophecy to Josiah. After this famous episode under Josiah, the Bible no longer mentions Hulda. We do not know the end of her life and ministry. Our biographical information comes from two brief passages in 2 Kings 22.14 and 2 Chronicles 34.22. Let us read together 2 Kings 22, verses 14 to 20. Then Hilkiah the priest, Ahikam, Akbor, Shaphan, and Asaiah went to Hudah the prophetess, the wife of Shalom the son of Tikvah, the son of Harhas, keeper of the wardrobe, Hoshult in Jerusalem in the second quarter. And they spoke with her. Then she said to them, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, Tell the man who sent you to me, Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will bring calamity on this place and on its inhabitants, all the words of the book which the king of Judah has read, because they have forsaken me and burned incense to other gods, that they might provoke me to anger with all the works of their hands. Therefore my wrath shall be aroused against this place and shall not be quenched. But as for the king of Judah, who sent you to inquire of the Lord, in this manner you shall speak to him. Thus says the Lord God of Israel, Concerning the words which you have heard, because your heart was tender, and you humbled yourself before the Lord when you heard what I spoke against this place and against its inhabitants, that they would become a desolation and a curse, and you tore your clothes and wept before me. I also have heard you, says the Lord. Surely, therefore, I will gather you to your fathers, and you shall be gathered to your grave in peace and your eyes shall not see all the calamity which I will bring on this place. So they brought back word to the king. From this we learn that she was the wife of a certain Shalom wardrobe keeper at the temple in Jerusalem. She therefore lived near the religious and political nerve center of the kingdom of Judah, but far more than a simple housewife. Hulda stood out for her remarkable prophetic gifts to the point of being officially consulted by King Josiah on a theological matter of foremost importance. This pious king, who ascended the throne at the age of eight, undertook to restore the long neglected and forgotten temple. This major renovation project led to a major discovery. The high priest Hilkiah got his hands on an ancient text, none other than the book of the law given by God to Moses most likely Deuteronomy. Understanding that this was the holy founding scripture of Israel, King Josiah immediately decided to verify its authenticity and to question the prophetess Hudah to know God's will. But such a high doctrinal mission was entrusted to a woman may come as a surprise. Given the subordinate position reserved for women in society at the time, Yehulda clearly enjoyed great spiritual authority no doubt acquired through her closeness to God developed in diligent prayer and meditation on the scriptures. 
Indeed. James 4. It encourages us, draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. As the Apostle Paul reminds us, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus, Galatians 3.28. God blows where he wills, without worrying about human barriers. It is true that Hilda stands out as an exception, as an Old Testament prophetess. The prophets were mostly men, and only a few women took on this role as God's spokesperson. In addition to Hulda, one can mention Miriam, Deborah, and Isaiah's wife, the prophetess. Several factors may explain the rarity of prophetesses. The patriarchal society of the time offered few places and opportunities for women confined to the domestic sphere. They were generally not educated in the law and scriptures. Difficult in this context to emerge as a spiritual guide. The status of many. Forbidding women from teaching on religious subjects in public when men were present. Also limited their prophetic influence. Prophecy required long periods of retreat in the desert. A lifestyle hardly accessible to women who had to take care of their homes. The mores of the time made it reprehensible for a woman to exercise spiritual authority over men. Some think the masculine and warlike image of God in the Old Testament did not lend itself well to female spokespersons. This is why Huda's case is remarkable. The fact that King Josiah came to consult her officially, publicly acknowledging her prophetic authority, testifies to her exceptional gifts and qualities. Her inspiring example shows that God grants his gifts to all those he chooses, regardless of their gender, social status, or origin. Hulda's example forcefully reminds us that God can use any of his children to convey his messages if they surrender to the Holy Spirit with faith. As the Apostle Peter quoting the prophet Joel declares, And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out of my spirit on all flesh, and they shall prophesy. Acts 2.17 What encouragement to use our gifts in the Lord's service wherever he has placed us, without letting our status intimidate us. Thus, this prophetess, who marked the history of Israel, invites us to cultivate our inner life to discern God's voice and to faithfully proclaim his words of truth and grace without fearing unfavorable reactions. Her courage and integrity continue to pave the way for all those whom the Eternal calls to be his witnesses. She could have adapted her prophecies to flatter the king and gain his favor. But with integrity, she declares the whole truth of God's word, however severe and displeasing it may be. She does not hesitate to denounce the sins of the people, calling them to repentance. This faithfulness commands respect. Moreover, Huda's oracle reveals the two faces of the prophetic word. On the one hand, the warning of judgment. On the other, the hope of divine forgiveness. It reminds us that in the face of a just God, sin has disastrous consequences, but this God remains also merciful, ready to spare those who sincerely seek him. This balance between truth and grace is characteristic of the true prophets of Yahweh. She was a woman endowed with great inner strength. Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Even if society imposed limits on her as a woman, she did not allow these obstacles to hinder her prophetic vocation or diminish her faith. She trusted in her gifts and the call God had placed on her life. Imagine Hula as someone with a deep inner life. She must have cultivated her relationship with God in prayer and meditation on the scriptures to clearly discern his voice. Her closeness with the Lord shone through and gave her authority. Her life testifies that one can serve God faithfully in the humble condition that is ours. 1 Corinthians 1 26 29 on the fact that God chooses the humble and the despised. She did not seek glory or power, but used her gifts where she was. Her discreet yet real influence commands respect. I take from her example that one should never underestimate what a person who surrenders to God can accomplish regardless of their gender or social status. 
1 Samuel 16, 7 For the Lord does not see as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. The Lord writes straight with crooked lines. However, Hodah is not an isolated case in the Bible. Other prophetesses are mentioned there. First, we can mention Miriam, Moses' sister. She is called a prophetess. In Exodus 15.20, after singing a song of praise to God for the deliverance from Egypt, Deborah, judge of Israel. In the time of the Judges, chapters 4 and 5, she led the victory against the Canaanites and sang a long prophetic song. Isaiah's wife, Isaiah 8.3. We do not know her name, but she had a son with a prophetic name, Noadiah, Amaiah 6.14, a prophetess who with others tried to scare Nehemiah, Anna Luke 2.36, 38, daughter of Phanel of the tribe of Asher. She prophesies about Jesus in the temple in Jerusalem. Philip's four daughters, Acts 21.9, who prophesied. Although few, these prophetesses testify that God's Spirit could inspire women to exhort or praise God. That said, among these women, the one who stands out the most because of her importance is undoubtedly Deborah. Here are some reasons that explain her predominant role. Deborah was judge of Israel, an exceptional position of leadership and authority for a woman at that time. She arbitrated the disputes of the people. She personally led the Israelite army into battle against the Canaanites with General Barak, and God gave them a resounding victory. Deborah's victory song, Judges 5, is one of the oldest poetic texts in the Bible. It reveals her prophetic gifts. She was recognized as a wise counselor whom the people would come to for judicious guidance and decisions. Her courageous leadership made it possible to free Israel from the yoke of the Canaanite enemy and bring 40 years of peace. She is among the few women to have held political and military functions in Israel. Her story inspires women leaders and shows that God can give them authority to guide his people. For all these reasons, Deborah really stands out from the other biblical prophecies. By the extent of her influence and accomplishments, in God's service. Nevertheless, Deborah's case raises a dilemma. On the one hand, the Bible presents Deborah as a judge and military leader over men. But on the other, it says that a woman should not have authority over a man. How can we reconcile these aspects? It is true that verses indicate that the man is the head of the woman in the creational order. For example, 1 Timothy 2.13 And I do not permit a woman to teach or to have authority over a man, but to be in silence. For Adam was formed first, then Eve. However, Deborah's story seems to be an exception allowed by God within the framework of his sovereignty. In that troubled period of the judges, Deborah emerges through her exceptional leadership gifts, wisdom, and faith. The fact that Barak agreed to fight only if Deborah accompanied him. Judges 4.8 shows that she had incontestable spiritual authority from God. Barak was not taking orders from a mere woman, but recognized the anointing of the Spirit on Deborah. Deborah's case illustrates that God in His wisdom can bring about exceptions for specific reasons at a given time. But this does not undermine the general principle of male-female complementarity intended by the Creator. Finally, Hulda points to Jesus Christ, the Word of God par excellence. Just as Josiah sought the divine will through her, believers today must listen attentively to the voice of Jesus, the ultimate prophet. By welcoming his teachings into our hearts, we receive instruction, rebuke, but also comfort and promise of redemption. Rediscovering forgotten figures like Hulda reminds us how much biblical history is full of fascinating characters who all have a role to play in God's grand narrative and his people. This humble woman who served her God wisely and courageously in her time 
certainly deserves our attention and respect. Her example transcends the centuries to encourage every believer to use their gifts in the service of the kingdom through the power of the Spirit.